During the 2012 presidential campaign, Mitt Romney had a problem. I mean, obviously, Mitt Romney had a lot of problems. But he had one particular problem when he picked as his running mate Congressman Paul Ryan, who was nationally famous at that point for one thing, uh, for being the budget guy who wanted to kill Medicare. Paul Ryan had released budget after budget after budget over a period of years that all called for the dismantling of Medicare. And Mitt Romney didn't want to be known as the presidential candidate who was trying to kill Medicare. That's a really tall order. So the Romney campaign came up with a solution, kind of an I rubber your glue solution. Look, Mitt Romney claims President Obama will end Medicare. Oh, he'll, d oh, I see, ta-da, problem solved. In politics, this is a classic. When you're getting attacked for something, just accuse your opponent of being guilty of the same thing. Whatever the attack is, if it's sticking to you, just apply those words in a substantively meaningless way to whoever's saying it about you, so at least it starts to seem confusing to people or the words lose their meaning. It is in that tradition that last night came to this. Look, Rachel Maddow mocked Rand Paul for plagiarism, but she's been accused of it too. This article on a conservative website, which includes input from Senator Paul's representatives and even a statement from a Rand Paul advisor, uh, presents no evidence at all of plagiarism by this show. Uh, the closest it gets to accusing the show of plagiarism is noting that other people on the internet made similar historical analogies to stories in the news that we have covered. But look at the headline, Maddow's guilty of it too. I'm rubber, you're glue. So sure, Senator, sure sources close to Rand Paul you can try to make this whole problem for yourself about me, try to make me the story. Go for it, good luck, I can take it. But you are gonna have to, I'm rubber, you're glue, a lot of people other than me. Because there's more people than me who have reported this factual, checkable information about what you've done wrong that you still haven't owned up to, you still haven't apologized for, and you still haven't said you're, you will fix. You're gonna need a bigger brush if you're gonna tar all of us. After our original report aired on Monday, the website BuzzFeed also reported another example of Senator Rand Paul plagiarizing in a speech. Now today, the Beltway newspaper Politico has revealed two more instances of Rand Paul plagiarizing in speeches. Politico pointed to a 2013 speech by Rand Paul in which he responded to President Obama's State of the Union address. Also another speech this year at Howard University. In the State of the Union response, Senator Paul plagiarized a section of this AP article. The AP article reads, quote, the ranks of America's poor swelled to almost one in six people last year, reaching a new high as long-term unemployment left millions of Americans struggling and out of work. That's straight from the Associated Press. Here's Rand Paul. The ranks of America's poor have swelled to almost one in six people. We are now at an all-time high in long-term unemployment. Millions of Americans are struggling and out of work. So it's not just Wikipedia anymore. It's also the Associated Press and what was kind of a high-profile speech for him. The other example that Politico dug up was from a speech that Rand Paul delivered at Howard University in April. Senator Paul appears to have plagiarized a passage of that speech from a conservative group called Focus on the Family. So Wikipedia, multiple times, the Associated Press, now this conservative group, I believe it was their newsletter. That's the tally so far that we know of. After all these examples have now started to come out, Rand Paul is no longer saying that this is just a bunch of nonsense from Rachel Maddow, that hater, which is what he said on Wednesday. Staffers for Senator Paul are now saying, quote, going forward, he will be more cautious in presenting and attributing sources, even though they're still not admitting any blame. Right around the same time that Rand Paul's staff finally started to concede that maybe they might do something different in the future, uh, mysteriously, the Rachel Maddow is a plagiarist and, you know, has a war on women thing, uh, came down off the Dredge Report, where it had been prominently featured for, for a few hours. It's a nice try, though. This is called running from your mistakes. I mean, the story has gone from bad to worse for Senator Paul. I think because he basically refused to take responsibility for what he did. It's not the worst thing to be accused of. You cheated, you stole stuff from Wikipedia. High school students have done it and they go to de detention. There's no detention for senators, so instead you go, aw shucks, and say, I'm sorry, I screwed up and it won't happen again. Blame an intern, dude. Instead of just acknowledging that he screwed up, or at least that his staff screwed up, and explaining how it happened, Senator Paul, at first, disappeared and refused to comment to anybody, including even his hometown newspaper. Then he started smearing the people who brought the story to light. Because of that refusal to own up to what happened, we now know that this is not just a Wikipedia thing. Rand Paul seems to have a penchant for plagiarizing from all sorts of different places. This now seems like a bigger problem than it first appeared, which now means it's going to require more of an explanation.
What used to be the controversy about Senator Rand Paul as an author uh, was that he hired this guy to be his ghostwriter. The Southern Avenger, a conservative Confederate flag mask-wearing commentator who would write longingly about avenging the South. John Wilkes Booth was right. John Wilkes Booth, of course, assassinated Abraham Lincoln. So says the Southern Avenger, quote, I raise a personal toast every May 10th to celebrate John Wilkes Booth's birthday. When Rand Paul was called out for having this guy ghostwrite his Rand Paul Tea Party Manifesto book, uh, Senator Paul's defense for having the toasting the Lincoln assassin guy as his paid ghostwriter was that all that Confederate stuff from that guy was sort of a youthful indiscretion. Can no one do dumb things in their youth that they grow out of as adults? The problem with that defense was that turns out it was only a few months before Rand Paul hired him that the Southern Avenger was still defending in print the virtues of Southern secession. So the Confederate flag, wrestling mask, unrepentant Confederate toasting the assassination of Lincoln, uh, him being hired by Rand Paul to ghostwrite his book, that used to be the controversy about Rand Paul as an author. Now the controversy about Rand Paul as an author is what was first reported by BuzzFeed's Andrew Kaczynski over the weekend. He reported that three solid pages of Senator Paul's most recent book was lifted without quotation marks directly from a right-wing think tank. Uh, for context, I should tell you that is a block of text longer than the lead story in today's New York Times, just copied straight up and reprinted in his book as if it's his own words. And another section of the same book was lifted directly from a different right-wing think tank. And then tonight, yet more, Mr. Kaczynski at BuzzFeed reporting tonight on yet another example of Rand Paul lifting language, in this case from a magazine article, uh, for an op-ed that he wrote in the Washington Times. He then apparently repurposed that same plagiarized text to use as testimony in the Senate. Asked on ABC's Sunday morning show yesterday about just some of what he has been caught stealing from others and presenting as his own work, uh, Senator Paul told ABC that the people reporting this information about him are hacks and haters. I think I'm being unfairly targeted by a bunch of hacks and haters, and I'm just not going to put up with people casting aspersions on my character. I take it as an insult, and I will not lie down and say people can call me dishonest, misleading, or misrepresenting. I have never intentionally done so. And uh, like I say, if, you know, if, if dueling were legal in Kentucky, if they keep it up, you know, it'd be a dual challenge. But I can't do that because I can't hold office in Kentucky. So what Senator Rand Paul uh, takes this reporting about what he has done in his books and his speeches as an insult. He says he is being unfairly targeted. Uh, he goes so far as to say it would be the cause of a challenge uh, for a duel if dueling were still allowed in Kentucky. Senator, there is nothing wrong in the reporting, and there is nothing intended to be personally insulting about the reporting. It's true reporting which has shown that in many, many instances, in print and out loud, you have lifted whole long passages of other people's work and passed it off as your own. I understand that may be an uncomfortable thing to hear. Senator Paul seems to be sort of skirting the thin line between shame and anger on this, right? But, the, but there is nothing wrong with the reporting. This sort of thing happens. You know, this show, we have been on the air long enough that I have experienced this kind of argument before. At one point, we had a really strange exchange uh, when Marco Rubio was first running for the Senate, where on this show, I pointed out that he was running as a fiscal conservative, but he put out a budget proposal that would raise the deficit by $3 trillion. Mr. Rubio responded to that reporting by me by saying, uh, essentially, I'm proud to be insulted by this Rachel Maddow character. If she thinks I'm wrong, then I must be right. But... Okay, you're still putting forth a budget that would raise the deficit by $3 trillion. How about engaging with the facts? This is how it works, though, right? We pointed out at one point that Fox News TV host Bill O'Reilly had unfairly smeared a government employee named Shirley Sherrod. Mr. O'Reilly responded to our reporting by saying, well, you have low ratings. <laughs> okay, you can try to make this about me, but how about addressing the substance? And now Senator Rand Paul wants to shoot at me or stab me with a sword or something for reporting something true that he has done wrong as a politician. Responding to the person rather than to the charge is a time-tested tactic. Honestly, it is a symptom of immaturity in our political discourse that it's expected that this is part of the way you'll respond. 
But the way that the senator is comporting himself in the light of this controversy seems to be having bigger consequences for him than who he tries to start fights with. In the senator's hometown press, back home in the state of Kentucky, the reaction to this whole episode has been pretty brutal, and it hasn't had anything to do with me. Last week on Halloween, in response to the plagiarism revelations, the Lexington Herald leader published a stinging editorial that read in part, quote, with Senator Paul's shape-shifting history, the plagiarism raises a more fundamental concern. How will the public ever determine what he actually believes or knows? The sheriff with a big tin star for the law and order crowd. Robin Hood, perhaps, for the liberal enclave. Judging from the flexible persona of the adult Rand Paul, one wonders if the little boy changed costumes from block to block after determining the preference of the adults handing out the candy. And today, the Louisville Courier Journal wrote that the plagiarism revelations and the way that Senator Paul has dealt with this issue calls to mind his refusal to answer their questions about a whole host of other unrelated topics. Namely, Senator Paul's refusal to answer the Courier Journal's questions about his medical practice and whether or not he really is a board certified ophthalmologist, which it kind of seems like he's not. I do not care if Senator Rand Paul ever responds to me personally. He has not come on the show since he wouldn't answer my questions years ago about the Civil Rights Act. But Senator Paul may yet feel compelled to finally answer questions from his hometown press because of this pressure on him. And if that is the case, then this may yet be a growth experience for the young freshman senator. We shall see and we shall hope so. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. On guard. <laughs>